have any clergy here tonight? All right. Public input, I have Jamie, you down for public input. If there anybody else, um, please follow public input, all right? When you do come up to the podium, please pull the mic down and speak right into it so those on uh, the TV can hear you. I bring this uh, to your attention um, because it's really gotten out of hand. Uh, we've been dealing with this for several years now. Um, uh, property of 218 North Chestnut. The property is has overgrown. Um, the weeds are out so tall that they've fallen over and they're out in the alley um, between Chestnut and Third Street to where you can get a vehicle through. Um, and I, I'm surprised something hasn't been done before now about the property. I have some pictures here to share with you of the property. Um, I just hope that something is done because there, there are ordinances um, that, that should take care of these problems. Thank you. And <coughs> that's all I have is, is um, I, I hope something will be done. Okay. Jamie, what we will do, I'll refer that to the uh, committee and also ask the, uh, the chief nuisance ordinance person um, to look at that property for us. So, it's 218 North Chestnut, right? Just so, and thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. You're welcome. Hi, I'm Jill Remar, I'm a person, and I'm here on behalf of the Central Kansas Conservancy Board. Uh, we want to invite all of you to the ribbon cutting for the Medlock Trail, which will be on Saturday, September 13th at 11.30. And we've been very excited about the reception and the support we've received from Lensburg. Gotten a lot of positive feedback, so we're hoping for a good turnout. And we'll have hot dogs and potato chips and all kinds of good stuff <laughs> for you after the um, ribbon cutting. So we hope that you'll be able to attend and anybody else. And we'll be putting up posters around town about it, too. Okay. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much for being here. I missed the date. It's Saturday, September 13th at 11.30 a.m. Okay. Yeah. At the truck. At the train Okay. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thanks. That's exciting. Yes, it is exciting. Thank you. Yes, that is very exciting. Uh, for those that haven't been on the trail, uh, you know, I hear good things. I'm one of them. I'm sure that. So, um, please go and enjoy. Amendments to the agenda. Any amendments to the agenda? Mary Ann, uh, looking for a motion for the approval of the August 11th regular council meeting. <coughs> yes. So moved. Second. second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Thank you very much. Mayor's report, um, just a few things looking, be sure to to look at the agenda items, council members, for the, uh, the calendar items coming up. There's several uh, advisory boards in that. If you wish to attend any of those, see what's going on in those areas. I want to also thank the sponsors of the street dance uh, a couple weekends ago. Thought it was a great night. Lots of people out on the street and uh, moving down the night before seemed to have gone well. And, and so thank you everybody for their support of those events in Lindsborg. Keep in mind recycling, uh, the public parts. So if I looked at the calendar right, I, I think it's been about a year now since we've had those. When I looked at my paperwork today, is that possible? Does anybody remember for sure? It's about a year since we've had the blue carts? Or is it just spring? I thought it was in. Well, maybe it's in the spring. Larry, do you Oh, was it in the spring of this year? Spring of this year, or was it? Fall of last year. I, I think we started discussing it in the fall of last year and actually implemented it in the spring. Either yeah. way, just keep that in mind. I, I really, uh, I guess I always push recycling and it's so easy to do and I hope those in the public will will take advantage of that and do that. So uh, the only other thing is to remind council uh, things that are
put here for you again the journal that we remember to take those things on and read them and send you that. Appointments. We have uh, two that I believe came to you. The first one is uh, Jason <coughs> Sherwood from the fire department. Do I hear a motion? Motion to approve, second. Moved and seconded for Jason Sherwood. Any discussion? I was just going to ask you here. He's on. Okay. Nope. <coughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Second one, those opposed, same sign. Sorry. Get ahead of myself. Second one is Nick Shipman for the cemetery board. Motion to approve. Seconded. Any further discussion? Who's he replacing? Joel. Joel White. Yeah. Okay. Joel resigned last time, last month, and Nick's coming on. Nick's done a lot of work out there. I talked to Nick about it, and he's excited to get on board with that. So, um, all those in favor say aye. 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 I have two more at your the letters that came late for volunteer ambulance. Uh, one of them is Jeremy Simon and Sam McCall. These are both for EMS. Recommend approval. Motion. It's been moved and seconded to recommend them for EMS. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 So how many is that for Eight, Chief? Um, is it 16, I think. 16. Okay. Doing well? Yes. Is the class over, the one that we, or is that coming up still? Right, those two are... Uh, Sam is actually Warren. She's from the college. Okay. She graduated with the class, and she's back for from Bethany, so she'll be starting now. So. How many did we pick out from that class? Um, four. Good. Will you be planning another class, or is that planning another class in the spring? Okay. September meetings. Any questions there? I just could ask you to highlight those. Um, yes. I have some on there. The council retreat is September 19th and 20th, not August. <laughs> it was a good meeting, but we'll do it again. Yeah, it was a good meeting. 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 There would also be the reminder that on Monday, September 8th, we have our individual interviews with John Dallas. Thank you. You guys are doing great. Any other reminders on the calendar? <laughs> Are the John Vine interviews here in the city? Yes, yes they'll be in the conference room downstairs. Okay. Planning and zoning, anything? There's just a minute. There's uh, nothing for, for action. Great. Let's move on to committees then. Administration and finance. Um, okay. First item is the 2013 audit. And I see David. Is he here? Well, I think really the purpose of, of uh, Dave O'Dell this evening being here is if there's any questions, the Administration and Finance Committee, um, well, he presented to the Administration and Finance, um, was answered questions. Also, um, the committee is recommending acceptance of the 2013 audit, but if there's any specific questions, of the audit that you may have that he can answer. He's available to see me for that. Anybody any specific questions? No. Hearing none. We it's been moved. Do we have a second? Second. Moved and seconded. Now is the chance to have further discussion. Hearing none. Do we need a roll call on this? No. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next item is, <coughs> excuse me, is the uh, normal edition neighborhood revitalization <coughs> program, um, specifically talking about Sunflower Development Group and the new student housing at Bethany College. Um, I don't know who wants to speak to this. Is this we do have a representative here tonight, Gary. Or... Great, or Gary. Well, I'll just I'll just say that uh, this was presented to both committees, 
and both committees uh, um, a consensus, at least with the administration of finance, to offer a 25% rebate. I think we're all familiar with the neighborhood revitalization program. Are there any questions about how it works? We just approved one a month ago, too. Um, this plan will rebate taxes to the developer of the student housing facility, Sunflower. Um, we have Dan Moy from Sunflower Development. He's a development coordinator, and he can answer any questions. Um, in fact, Dan, why don't you come on up, and uh, I'll open it up to the, uh, the council. Although, are you going to ask for a motion, or should we talk about it in advance? How do you want to handle that vote? Uh, it's probably better to get a motion in a second and we'll get a discussion if we need to amend. All right, so the motion coming out of committee, is this right? Correct. I'm sorry, I was not that committee, so I don't know what this Well, is. The, the, the consensus, I, I don't think I finished that thought. The consensus was to offer uh, Sunflower 25% okay. rebate on taxes for five years. For five years. And the uh, Streets and Parks uh, Public Safety Committee uh, agreed with that. and. Uh, that was the motion to approve. I uh, went ahead and uh, adjusted the, uh, well, actually I filled in the blanks because I, I didn't have any numbers at, at that point. And the plan that is in the packet um, uses the, that particular formula for the rebate. So okay. if you approve the plan that's in front of you, that's the rebate. That's the I make a motion that we approve this plan. I have a motion, is there a second? Second. Now let's have a discussion. Okay, and I'm going to turn it over to Dan because I think your questions are going to be for Dan. Sure, hi. Thank you. Uh, Dan Moore from Sunflower Development. Uh, like I mentioned, we're from Kansas City. Uh, we are working with Bethany to, uh, to build this uh, new dorm, this new resident hall. Uh, and they had asked, uh, we're going to try to partner with them as much as possible. They had asked that we, uh, we seek this abatement. Uh, the real, I asked that somebody from the uh, college be here. I don't think it was able to make it on, on short notice this evening. So I apologize for that. Um, really, the structure of what we're doing, uh, the school is in a position right now to take on enough debt to, uh, to build this project. So what we've come to do, we're coming to build it, uh, help them get it stabilized, and then hopefully turn it back over to them in a short period of time. Um, so really the reason that we're, we're pursuing this uh, abatement or rebate is because the, uh, the school, if it were only in themselves, would not be able, would not be uh, paying the tax that we exempt on this property. Uh, and we, we kind of looked into seeing if we could find some way to do that through state statute uh, because that's where really the purpose is. Unfortunately, per, uh, statute says purpose and ownership, so while it's meeting the purpose of the, the residence hall, uh, because we'll be able to does not qualify for the exemption. Uh, excuse me. So I understand uh, from uh, Tony Carey that uh, the maximum is, is five years at 100 and five years at 50. Uh, and I'm sure that's reserved for uh, extreme circumstances, but uh, I was hoping to uh, maybe extend what, uh, what was discussed in committee. Um, the, the real issue is that any, any increase because of the agreement we have is going to be passed on directly to the students because uh, the school is covering all of the operating costs as they would with the normal building that they own. Um, so, so any increase we can get to help the school uh, and can get them stabilized and get this under their under their wings as soon as possible. But I'm happy to answer any questions anybody has. Um, I have been super involved in the development side of this uh, of this project, so I have maybe lacking for some answers, unfortunately. Um, but I'm willing to try. I'll start with a question. Um, when you talk about getting it back, turning it back to them and that as soon as possible, do you have a time frame plan that that is? You know, I, I really, like I said, haven't been super involved on that side. Uh, I think it, it's in everybody's best interest that, uh, you know, they want to keep growing as, as, as much as possible. Um, so the, the quickest that they can get a stabilized and in a position where they're in, in that position to be able to take it over, uh, that would be their goal. And I, I think we would hope to, to work with them again as they, as they expand. So I, I don't have a definitive time period, but I, I don't think there's any speed that's too fast as long as they can get in a position to do it. Okay. And is this kind of a, a trend with housing on college campuses where a developer um, builds and and the college maintains the property and then you know I will admit that this is my first our first time Sunflower doing a project like this. 
business of working on campus. Uh, you know, from, from my personal experience, my understanding is generally a school owns their buildings and operates them. Uh, but I, I can imagine that some smaller schools, uh, as they are seeking to you know, expand, might have some issues they growing in quite the way they want, getting loans, that type of stuff. Um, so kind of what we've structured is they may think that they are able to cover all of the issues that they need to, um, but the bank may not be willing to, to risk that. So if we can go in and operate it for two or three years to show that sort of they do have full occupancy, that they have all of the things that they need to satisfy a bank, then that gets them over the hump and then they can uh, you know, proceed from there. So what does exactly take it over me? Uh, we, would, we would sell it back to them. Uh, I don't know what that structure would look like at this point in time, um, but the, the idea would be to get the, the property back into their hands. Um, and then I don't know, like I said, I, I haven't been involved in those discussions on our side, um, so I don't know exactly what that would be, but there's a, a purchase option built into the uh, contract. Is the number of students that it will house comparable to what Deer held, or is it bigger? Uh, I am not familiar with Deer very well, but I know the, the uh, current plan is for 240 beds uh, in, in, in the building. But um, I've had residents that are really concerned about what's going to happen to their their street during construction, but past construction, um, is there a plan for parking? Because that's a whole lot of people. You know, I, I really don't, uh, I, I haven't been involved on in those planning side at this point. That's really why I hope to get someone from the school here to be able to speak to that. Um, so I, I'm not exactly sure what the parking plan is because I haven't been involved on the uh, construction side. Uh, so because I, there's just really, um, there's, there's not a lot of
do we stop to carry out the rest of this, or is it just null and void at that point? It was down to education. Essentially, it's null and void because there aren't any taxes okay. collected at that point. And when I reached out to Gary initially, uh, you know, he, he suggested checking on the exemption, uh, and, and we kind of pursued that at the same time as we, we started this uh, down this path because, the, like, like the goal from day one was to get this in indefinite possession as, as quickly as possible. Um, so you know, the exemption made no sense um, for for easing any burden on them. Uh, but we also kind of recognized what came to be true that it just didn't qualify because we were really the owners in the short term. Um, so you know, our expectation is whatever you do pass, uh, probably won't see the full term. If all things go right. right. I mean, some sunflower, uh, we're very excited to be part of it, but we, we don't have any history running the dorm. Um, we don't expect to be in that business. We want that thing to be very successful and, and, and be the one who takes care of it. The question I have is the $5 million a good number? Uh, you know, I really am not familiar with okay. the assessment practices uh, around here. Uh, in prior life, I, I worked with the county assessment office in Jackson County. Um, I know Kansas City, Kansas and Missouri are very different, very different areas in general. So I, I'm really just not. Uh, she sure. came from 60 miles away. That makes you an expert. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. In, uh, in speaking to the 25 percent, the reason we had a very strong agreement at the 25% level. We realized that we could have gone to other levels. We're looking at a, you know, a, a budget that we've got to look at all the things that we are, we are facing as a city. Uh, we are, and we are certainly behind the college, and we've demonstrated that time and time again. We look at the Swenson Street out there. There's only one residence on Swenson Street, and we built a boulevard coming down to the entrance of the college. We're 100% behind the college, but we also have to be 100% behind the town. At this time, this seemed the most judicious thing that we could do to benefit your business, the students, and the city as a whole. And we're, you know, it's not that we're inflexible, but it certainly was, we, we've got to be very judicious with our dollars, given where we, what we are facing, we, we were, you know, our city has run pretty well. We're not, not destitute, but we aren't destitute because we do keep a good eye on the beans and bullets that we count this town. So uh, that's why we, we went with the 25%. I can understand you're wanting more and you're making the statement that that'll be passed on to the students. Uh, with all the things that there, there are a lot of things that have to occur for that thing to go, that building to go up down there. There's going to be a lot of activity, and that's a very aggressive schedule to have that building by next fall. We're looking at, you know, some, some studies for the, the sewage. Uh, there's some costs to the city that aren't even aren't even seen, and we haven't even discussed. But this council is aware of them. So given all the things that we're facing as a city, the, all the supporting functions that have to go with that, we've got to be very judicious with our dollars. It's not that we don't support the students. <clears throat> Other questions around the room? Hearing none, any final thoughts? I, I, I think I've kind of spoken with where we're coming from. Um, okay. you know, I, I certainly understand all those and those are not unique to, to Lindsburg and certainly a lot of places are going through that I know uh, from my past life I went through some of those issues. <laughs> uh, so you know, you know our, our outlook is we want to get this turned over to the school as quickly as possible um, and, and any scenario where you know, it appears the same to a bank as it would anywhere else uh, really is beneficial to them. Uh, and, and so, you know, um, we, we, we would ask for, you know, at least 50% for some period of time. So I, I'll leave it up to you for okay. some discussion. Um, but happy, happy to answer any more questions you have. Well, thank you for being here and thank you for support of Bethany and working with them to get this project done and, and that. So, again, thank you for the city. Thank you very much. One last time, any additional questions? Hearing none, the motion on the table is 25% for five years. 
one more question. Bethany College is aware of what um, the recommendation was coming out of the committee to full council to be voted on this evening. I can't answer that. I'm not sure. Dan, did you talk to representatives of yeah, I have not directly spoken to any of the representatives. Uh, I, I know they were made aware that this meeting was going on, but I'm not sure what time frame they were made aware. Um, you know, we requested over the weekend that they be here, and uh, I know Ken Maker was trying to make it, but I don't, just apparently wasn't able to. And so I'm not sure if they were aware of the, uh, the level or not. And you and I spoke, I believe, on Friday. It was after the Friday after the, the Thursday committee meeting. Okay. And that's so a week. All right, additional questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passed. Thank you, Jerry, for your work. Thank you again for being here. The next item is um, uh, the proposal to opt out of the 28 day provision of um, from the Kansas statutes long-term stay and uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, transient gas tax. Um, Becky, before you start, there is a charter ordinance, a corrected charter ordinance in front of you versus the one that was on file. Okay. Um, this is a motion to pass charter ordinance number 19 as it pertains to the gas tax. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Moved and second. Discussion? The Everybody wants to talk about who's, who's you're, you're in charge of the meeting, so. Um, my biggest question was, how is this going to be distinguished from renters of normal property versus people staying in, say, the Granada? How are we going to distinguish this in legal terminology? Thank you, I think Bill will even put something in. I have, I have real concerns. About yeah, I, I have a concern over that too. I think I think by removing the transient portion of the definition, you open up a challenge that anyone renting an apartment could argue that if well, there's nothing to distinguish renting an apartment from renting a hotel room, and I think you're. Probably asking for a challenge by adopting this ordinance. Challenge from could be either side. Could be the people who are not or who are being charged the transient gas tax, or it could be should you choose not to enforce that against an apartment building, for example. You could have the anybody to challenge that. I think we need some kind of extra terminology to the point that applies mainly to room or lodging that was built with an intent of being used for daily or weekly, something like that. I, I think there needs to be something in there to specify this a little better. Can that language actually be added? Though? Yeah, I I was asked that question a couple weeks ago, and I think it's extremely difficult to draw that line. Uh, how, how do you distinguish between a room that is rented for 31 days or a room that's rented for six months or an apartment that's rented? Uh, if that were the case, why wouldn't we be challenged now? <laughs> because you've got the transient definition that says 28 days or less. That's the distinguishing factor. And I think the reason that it's 28 days is because that takes it out of the possibility of a month-to-month -month tenancy. I, I'm just guessing that. I, I've not looked at the legislative history of that transient yes, word, uh, uh, law at the state level. Why can't you define a lodging facility as a hotel slash motel slash bed and breakfast? That's already what's in the ordinance. That's already what's in the state statute. The only thing that distinguishes is the transiency. But can't then the charter ordinance say the same thing? Well, uh, how, how do you define the difference? That's my point. 
I mean, currently it's just a fine based on somebody staying there less than 28 days, correct? That's correct. So, I mean, theoretically, you could up that amount. You could say 350 days. So, but then at that point, everybody who rents would pretty much need a one-year contract. That's correct. At the minimum, you wouldn't be able to rent month to month unless you want to accidentally fall under this, which, I mean, we're all talking hypothetically anyways, as to if anybody would even do anything in regards to this. Okay, let's say that we can work through this issue. Um, I have, and, and throw another, another um, question out there. Uh, I understand that that question is not resolved. Um, I understand that um, the, the conversation with Bethany College, who has contracted with the Viking and the Coronado for their rooms, um, said that you know this was something you know in our forewarning of them what we were looking at. Um, that, you know that that was if that's the way it had to be, that's the way it had to be. But my question is, does the if this is to pass as it is, given there are problems, um, even given there are problems. Does that put those business owners at greater risk, for example, have they already signed a contract with Bethany College to house X number of students for X number of days for a certain rate, and then if a bed tax is assessed after the fact, it's something that's going to have to come out of the contracted amount? Do My understanding, it's a verbal agreement, so I can't give you a definitive answer on whether that would be coming out of the lodging establishments, um, revenue stream or whether it would be charged on top of that revenue stream. I don't know the answer to that question. I mean, I understand the, 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 the need to, to do this. We've got a CBD that does a great job already with working with little to nothing to do the promotion for our entire community that they do. And um, with all the long-term stays, the obligations um, that the hotel owners have I've chosen to go with to, I'm sure, to assure a steady income. Um, it has threatened the, the operating budget of our own CDB. So, to touch on that, now, Bill, one of those people would have a lawyer drop a contract for something like that if they did. Would they have something in there with the parameters and the situation changed? It's full weighted. Well, if they had more foresight than I would, they might. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess who thinks of this happening? Right. Like, this isn't really normal or. Yeah. Well, in most agreements I've seen, they have a separability clause in it that, you know, something may change, but the rest of the contract's still valid. I mean, that's how your typical agreement or contract's going to be written. So this particular clause may be void, but the rest of it's still applicable. Well, I guess the other point is, too, is if this could even be made to work. Bill, do you think there's any way that this could be worded, something could be added to it that would make it define what we are specifically wanting? Well, uh, I mean, that's... What I said, I mean, I was asked that question several weeks ago. I think that's extremely difficult to draw that line. It would be better to at least try to draw a line. Well, I think what would be the, 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 better, the better approach, frankly, and this isn't necessarily, I guess it is a legal opinion because it takes you out of an argument, and that is to negotiate a payment in lieu of the taxes and just do it on a contractual basis rather than on an ordinance basis. How would you do that as a municipality? How would you go to somebody and say, hey, you have to give us this, or else we're going to enact an ordinance? I mean, isn't that? So we've done it's that. already been done. We've yeah. done that, but it is totally based upon the willingness of the other Correct. part. Yeah. Correct. And today, we haven't been able to do that. Attempts have been made. Attempts have been made? Yes. Yes. OK, so well, that answers that. Situation. So the presumption is if this were, if this charter ordinance number 12 were adopted, that um, in all likelihood um, the party that would be most offended by it is going to challenge it. That's my concern. 
Well, I'm looking at a situation where you know, we're going to have to have a lot of construction workers in here for a good period of time to put up this hall. And it's going to amount to a lot of people. If I'm a, if I'm a construction company, I no longer come in here and tell my people to get a room. I'm going to put them up down here. I'm just going to say, we're going to book this thing for, for a long term. We're going to say, you're not going to check out. You're just going to stay there continually. And we're just going to dodge this tax all the way around so we can virtually fill up our hotels with college students, fill up our hotel with construction workers, and not draw a dime of transient guest tax. Now, which costs us more? A challenge that we can pursue, confront, back away from? You know, we're, we're sitting here <clears throat> wide open here because we're, it looks like a good thing is happening, this, this, this hall. This hall could be a blessing in disguise, but it could also be something very negative to the community because it could actually be revenue negative because of that very situation. And I think we're, we're you know, my personal opinion, and I'm not a lawyer, I don't even presume, presume to be, Bill's certainly more qualified to give an opinion of what might happen, but I can, I can also see some things happening that we didn't anticipate, and this is one of them. And, I, and I've been on the road, I've traveled on the road, and I've spent a lot of money, and a lot of that was guest tax over the years. And there's a lot of places where I could have gone in and my, my company could have just said, just stay, don't check out. And I've, I've spent 30, 40, 50 days in a hotel. That could be pretty devastating to our, our CBB. I think long term it's even devastating to our hotels because right now they're turning down business and they are um, calling individuals and telling them that they don't. Could you cannot, I, can't, I can't hear you. They cannot there. keep Hold their on. reservations. So everybody can hear the public. Why don't you go? Sure. Currently, it's my understanding with like the Swede Gen meetings that are coming up in late September, the hotels called individuals and told them they would not be able to keep their reservations two or three months ago when they found out they would be contracting for this period of time with Bethany. So, they have, individuals had to find other accommodations. In other so, words, what I'm describing is already happening. Long term, what, that ha what happens to your hotels if you do that, people don't come back. Yeah. I think I think we've got to um, take another view of this as well. Um, and I I totally understand and, and echo everybody else's sentiments about the CBD and the great work that it's doing. And we all know what this budget is all about. I I I think this is a blip on the radar right now. Bethany is in this place. It's a good place to be. I mean, if we were looking at, well, let's see, what else can we do with this dorm over here that has no students in it? Bethany, would you like to have this be a long-term care facility over here? Because we don't have any students. They have students. So I don't want to, I do not want to, I, me personally, I do not want to send a message to Bethany that we're going to penalize you for your hard work and bring in more students. I want to see us as a city saying, hotel, new hotel, get, get here. I had a conversation the other day with this person from whatever the name of the place is, and um, about a hotel being built here. Um, we have two, the Viking and the Coronado are somewhat, I think, um, I'm not sure the word is exceptional, but, um, not the norm. And um, when Bethany gets this form built in next year, they, none of those students are staying over there. And are they going to be full with, with um, workers? We have no idea. We have, there's new motels being built in the first time. We might not get any of this business. We don't know. That. And I just think that we're at a place right now in Lipsburg with Bethany College. Um, I don't want 
wanted to do something to, to tell Bethany, um, you know, we, we, uh, we're not going to be a part of the solution here for, for growing that college. Because that has longer term benefits to us than anything else. Anything else. I do, I do want to speak to one of your comments because one of the things you brought up was um, not knowing that we'll have these stays from some of the construction going on. That's very true. But right now we're not getting a transient gas tax out of those anyhow because of the fact that they are long term. So that also is affecting them as well. And it's, um, you know, I mean, this, this again is stress on a budget because we don't have the support from our state. And so we're having to, to suck it up and, and think, look at things from within our budget that we didn't used to have to do. But um, you know, the last thing we want to do is start paying attorneys. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any more attorneys? You're already on payroll. Because we can't, we can't spend that. No, that's that to me would be wasteful spending. And I, I value what you're saying, but I think the important thing is this isn't just about long-term rentals to Bethany College and their students. It's also to those construction companies and organizations that have rented those motel rooms and were even displaced um, by the hotel owners in favor of Bethany College students. I mean, it's 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 not an attack on Bethany. It's it's a we've got a community to promote, and our CBB is is not receiving the funding that by by statute, that's how it's the CBB is funded. Correct? The bed tax? The, the, well, I mean, it's not how it was totally funded. The marketing the, I mean, but I mean, that's not a part of statute that, that you know, you're funded by the marketing aspect of it. That's correct, isn't it? The transit well, the transient gas tax says that it goes towards um, promotion of community or the whole philosophy of heads on beds. It's, on beds. it's very it's specific goal. about promotion of lodging. Okay. And that's where it started, and that's the, that's the origination of it, was when this tax was first put forward by the legislature um, 25, 30, 40, I don't even know how many years ago it was there. But, um, but I, think, I think that we need to also look here, and, and I, I don't believe there's any other cities that are doing this. Trying to charter out of this? I think I think Bill mentioned that before that that there's not I, I don't I don't know. I have not seen any other ones, but I have not looked. And when when you wait into the call you haven't seen it yet, right. but you haven't looked at that. Right. So meaning you haven't you did not yeah. research that but you're not. I didn't research it because I thought it was belief. so obvious. Okay. Okay. I just want to understand. Mm -hmm. I mean if by passing this ordinance, you are basically telling any apartment building in town, anyone renting a duplex, anything like that, they're subject to the transient guest tax. I thought that was pretty obvious. Nobody had done it. But in order to in order to put them in harm's way where they would want to litigate, we'd have to be charging them the tax, which would not be our intention. Well, but well, if, if you have the ordinance on the books and you're not charging it, you're certainly going to get a challenge from the motels. Yeah, because well, you're not evenly enforcing the uh, statute. And actually, the administration of this isn't the city. It's the Kansas Department of Revenue that administers this. So the process is you adopt an ordinance, you have a 61-day waiting period for a potential challenge. And was the phone call made to the department? Yeah, but, it, but what I was going to say is, then we have to adopt a resolution to actually implement it. All this is sent to the Kansas Department of Revenue to implement and administer the program. Um, and based upon the input from them, there's no one in the state of Kansas doing this. I can tell you they're not supportive of it. But it's on the back of the price too much work for them. Well, that was the reason. That was the reason. Yeah. Yes. Well, I would like to come back to Becky's point uh, about sending 
messages to the college, and Benny, you were not aware, you were not there when we had this discussion. We have been, at, 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 at least as it was informed to me in that meeting, that there are those at the college who would say we have not been supportive. And yet we sat there and we went through project after project and ovation after ovation about how we have been supportive. We're sitting here now with a new building across the street that certainly requires some support. One of the things that it also required was some, to have some rooms available to be able to support this thing, which is now, as a result of progress with the college, greatly diminished. So if people do want to come here, in all likelihood, they've got to go to another town, which generates not one nickel of our promotional dollar for the CVB. We've got also got a lot of other costs that are going to be incurred as this building goes up, uh, sewage and some other infrastructure needs that are going to have to be bared by the city. And are we going to sit here and continue to be confronted by the fact that we're not supporting the college. We are supporting the college very strongly, very heavily. This isn't a temporary blip on the screen. This is something that's going to go on for 12 to 18 months or more, where we're going to take a whale of a bite in revenue. If this isn't the answer for it, I, I sit here and question what is. We're, at the, we're the ones that completely disadvantaged in this. The citizens of the town. Have, have we looked at that actual dollar figure on what this is costing as far as lost revenue? How, how much do we get a night? Six percent. Six percent. And what's the average? At this point in time, uh, last week when I visited with the Coronado owners, they did not have a number yet as to what their contract, final contract numbers were per room for them. Okay. It, and hypothetically and speaking, that, just a guess. I mean, is there any kind of guess that anybody would have? I don't know. I know it's a reduced rate from their typical overnight, but I don't know what the reduced rate is. Well, uh, I mean, what I'm getting at is like the amount. How, how much money are we talking about a year at this point? How much money did we bring in total last year on training? Or two years ago would be a better question, maybe. Yeah, two years ago, sure. My last week was eighteen thousand dollars. Okay, so I have to look at exact figures. We're talking, you know. 18, probably 18,000 at the most that it lost. Total, no, no, no. That's total from every lodging establishment I've got transient as tax from. And I have no way to break down where it comes from. Okay. The state has those records we do not include. But even if we lost 75% of our revenues, we probably would not exceed $18,000 worth of lost revenue this year. No. Okay. Uh, I'm just getting at that because, I mean, we're talking on the one thing. We're talking about doing a rebate of ninety-one thousand dollars, and we're losing eighteen thousand a year for five years, which is ninety-one thousand dollars. <laughs> you know. I have a question. It seems to be a lot of discussion. I'm not sure what we can do. Maybe some numbers, this and that. Is there any thought of putting it back um, for a month and seeing what we stand? When you say just putting it back for Put it back to committee and then maybe generate some other, you know, is there a possibility of wording change or has, has that all been explored? And what well, are the dollars if you want to know what they are? Well, um, yeah, other opportunities that are out there to, to see where this is going. Um, I guess I'm just an adult because I don't understand when it says in section three of the charter ordinance. In place of that portion of KSA 12, 1692, referred to above, the governing body of the city of Lindsborough, Kansas, defines transient guest for purpose of the act as any person who occupies a room in a hotel, motel, or tourist court. So I'm not clear how that individual is confused with somebody that signs an apartment lease. I just, I, don't, I can't get there. I don't hotel, understand. motel, tourist court is defined as someone who rents a room with or without a kitchen. Okay. In, the, in the statute. Okay. 
So in other words, a rental house, a three bedroom house is considered a hotel motel or this, by this, staff. Is, this is the definition of not the location, but the individual, but as the, as the transient guest. A transient guest is a person who occupies a room in a hotel motel or tourist court. And it's a transient guest. The reason the person is transient is because the definition in the statute now that you're changing goes on to say for a period of not not exceeding 28 days. Okay, now. One, once I took that language out, which is what I did, took that language of 28 days out of the definition, that's the only change which has been made because that's what takes it from transient to non-transient. So the change has to be to more clearly define the transient guest, not the locale where they're laying their head at night, but actually defining the guest or the length of stay. Well, I, I'm not sure that's true. Okay. I, I think it's more to try to define the location rather than the guest, because you you've removed you've already removed the definition of transient by taking the 28 days out. And I, I think I think the thing you're struggling with is there a way to to distinguish between what we consider to be clearly a motel or a hotel as opposed to an apartment building. Yeah, I, I think there'd have to be some wording that could define that. I mean of course the more wording you add, the more if you can read into it and the more different ways people can it'll interpret it. But Okay, with that again, I'll throw it out there. Do you want to put this back to committee for 30 days? Look for that word, look for that wording. Seems reasonable. Yeah. Well, you have a motion to second that. I know that. So you're going to tell me what, what I need to ask for. Basically, you'd be taking with the motion until October's meeting, correct? Yeah. You're good. You need a motion and a second to do that. Make the motion that we table uh, the adoption of Charter Ordinance Number 19 as it is written, or just Charter Ordinance 19. Just Charter. Second. Charter Ordinance 19 until the October uh, Council meeting. Moved and second. Discussion again. All in favor, say aye. 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 Oh, same sign. Thank you. Um, the next item is. <coughs> Proposed franchise fee to Idea Tech Telecom LLC. Um, and again, I'm going to have to defer to somebody. Does this mean? Um, I can speak to this. Um, Idea Tech Telecom uh, is wanting to install a fiber optic cable basically to serve as a backhaul for um, a wireless provider in the community. Um, according to our right of way ordinance to do so. They have to have a franchise agreement, a franchise agreement, um, and they're only providing service to one customer, not citywide. The $120 franchise free fee basically covers the permit and, and excavation fees as required by that right of way ordinance. Thank you, Jim. All right, so um, on the table, this is to approve that um, $125 franchise. That's a motion. Second. Moved and second. This is actually ordinance 4886. Is that correct here? So you are voting on ordinance 4886, which is that $125 fee. Is this a monthly fee or one time? One time. Okay. Good question. Any other discussion on? 4886. Hearing none. Roll call, please. Uh, Kelly. Yes. <coughs> Betty. Yes. Blaine. Yes. WR. Yes. Evil. Yes. Becky. Yes. Okay, hey, next item is voting delegates for the League of Kansas Municipalities meeting, which I'm assuming is the COVID meeting. Is that right? Correct. And who is going? You are, or you are not. <laughs> 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 you were voted. Yeah, okay, well, um, um, Mayor is? Taylor, Councilman Evil, um, Jerry, Gary, and myself, and there's still time. 
way with the Lord. Saturday, Sunday, Monday. So why not make lane? You need two voting and two all oh, votes. I know they Bill and Lane. Bill. Bill as in you. Yes, Bill uh declines because I will not be there on Monday. Oh you won't be there. Yes, so he's the odd man out. So yeah. you get to pick two out of the four yeah. remaining to okay. voting bill and it's two as alternates. Can Jerry be one? I can make yeah, one. Yeah, you can? Yeah, okay. I guess so. Never mind. I mean, I think you well, guys are all official, so I didn't know if you could qualify. Yeah, anybody that's going can. Anybody can. Okay. So, Blaine and Jerry. Second. That was a motion and a second that Blaine and Jerry are voting delegates and Jerry and Greg are alternates. Basically. We'll be verbally. <laughs> <laughs>
concrete saw, thank you, that we're not going to need. Um, you want to add anything, Tim? No, ma'am. Is that a motion? And that is a motion. Is there a second? Second. Been moved and seconded. I'd just like to say, doesn't the word tire just bring a smile on your face? <laughs> <laughs> it looks like it's involved. So. Dan was laughing. Not, <laughs> not like it does in Ellis. Further discussion on the icing sprayer for the Lynchburg community? Do we have that in writing that they will continue to provide the brine at cost? No. If think that's necessary, I'll go get it. It's poor. Is that necessary? Here? Well, we never heard of tools we have. Um, elected officials change, political change you have. Uh, the county engineers, et cetera. So. I think that'd be good to be at this time. Depending on you. Memorandum of understanding. Did anybody know? Did you get it? I did. Took me a second. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's have a BOT. All righty. Uh, sure. <laughs> Kelly. Yes. Betty. Yes. Lane. Yes. 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 Becky. Yes. Is there anything else for streets and parks? Okay. Next up on the agenda is out of sequence here. No. Okay. Yes. Here it is. Second. I'll catch up. Next up is ordinance number 4879 up for your consideration for approval. An ordinance regulating recreational vehicle and trailer parking within the city of Lunsford. As you recall, we visited about this last month. It went back for some tweaking, and here is the new and improved version. Um, I have a motion that we adopt ordinance number 4879. I have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Further discussion on ordinance 4879. What was two? Please approach the
with the approval of the abatement, we will serve them a paper, giving them 30 days to complete the job. And if they don't do it, they will do it for them. Does that abatement carry any ongoing future powers, or is that a one time? It's one time, and we have to do it again. Okay. Is there any way to perceive um, a backdoor out of their complying with this? I mean, if, if they fix, if they remove, for instance, uh, two of the four vehicles, one, two, three. The vehicles have been removed already. Okay, so that doesn't prohibit this moving ahead? Because no. it's not a clean property. Right, because it also includes junk, trash, metal, uh, lumber, etc. So that's what is left, uh, and that's what still needs to be addressed. So as long as there are things serving as a breeding ground for flies, mosquitoes, rats, and other insects, and as long as there's a danger to persons, and as long as there's a ready source of, is a ready source for fire and explosion, there will be action for us to take until those things are ready. That's correct. I'll say this is something that I hear about regularly. Additional questions on resolution 0614? Hearing none. Kelly. Yes. Betty. Yes. Lane. Yes. WR. Yes. Email. Yes. Becky. Yes. I wasn't sure, Mary. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Next up is uh, ordinance number 4881, um, which is uh, something we do, I, I think, every year mm -hmm. to update the uh, Uniform Public Offense Code, and that isn't about ugly uniform, but it's about making the offense codes uniform, is that right? That is correct. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve or Check adopt it. ordinance number 4881. Check it. Moved and seconded 4881. Any discussion about the uniform? Offense code. All those in favor say aye. 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 And again, that's for adoption. Roll call. All right. Roll call, please. Becky. Yes. WR. Yes. Wayne. Yes. Betty. Yes. Kelly. Yes. Okay. Also, up for approval is uh, or adoption is ordinance number 4882 which is updating the standard traffic ordinance and I make the recommendation that we adopt ordinance number 4882. Seconded. Moved and seconded on ordinance 4882. Any further discussion? Is there anything significant that's changed in the standard traffic ordinance? No, says the chief. Roll call, please. Kelly. Yes. Betty. Yes. Lane. Yes. WR. Yes. Emo? Yes. I don't believe I have any other. Item number nine is purchase order ordinance 4885, which you desire. Motion we approve. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion on ordinance 4885? Hearing none, roll we'll call, please. Becky? <laughs> Eagle? Yes. WR? Yes. Blaine? Yes. Betty? Yes. Kelly? Yes. Item 10, consideration payroll ordinance 4883 and 4884. You desire? So moved. Seconded. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion on either ordinance? Hearing none, roll call, please. Becky? Yes. Evo? Yes. WR? Yes. Blaine? Yes. Betty? Yes. Kelly? Yes. Item 11, other others? Yes, I do. Um, after the big rain and storm we had the other night, and all of the standing water, specifically east of Pizza Hut, is that water always in there? It would have to be rains, like it is now? Yes. Yes? Is that right? Yes. I mean, it was. It's changed worse this time, but yeah. it's always happened. Okay. I'm sure the mayor can okay. tell you how it threatens his property every time. Okay. Is there any chance of talking to the county about the dish that does run to the east by the cemetery and see? I've been looking at it every day. It, to me, the uh, the field entrance to the field needs a culvert and a little bit. I, I'd be glad to break it if somebody put a culvert under that field entrance. Because it'll go to Emerald Lake if, with a little, just a little more after things dry out. 
Is this a county issue? Is that a county issue or what? Yes. Property, property owner. That's a property owner issue for the field entry. Well, it's actually, it's county right of way. Um, so therefore, it's a county issue. They have re requirements for culverts, etc. So. I do have another. Becky, were you asking somebody to look in that? Well, yes. And then I was also, I have two phone calls about <clears throat> um, in the northwest part of the city um, about water. So I walked that area, and there was a lot of washing of, uh, over the curb. And is that the sewer drains? Or is that all open and clear and everything fine? I, I couldn't answer any of the questions. Are you talking about for this rainstorm we had yes. Sunday night? Yes. Well, we had a large amount of debris due to the hail and the wind. Okay. And it did, it plugged a lot of storm drains because of that. We had crews out for most of that night clearing the storm drain. Yes, it, in places it did top, but we had crews out most of the night making sure that those, once they plugged, they were cleared back out again. To, to carry the water away, yes. And then the water running along East State this morning, what was that? Was that was uh, the co-op pumping out one of their, uh, okay. their uh, scales. Okay, thank you. And then I have a question. It's a question I asked uh, several weeks ago, and that's about the speed limit on what I know as a cemetery road name now is Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo. And I understand that that is a county road, but now with, with Emerald Lakes and now assisted living and projected other projects starting out there, do we need to look at changing that speed limit? Because boy, that is still a little ways away. I, I, I'm fearful that there's going to be, especially with the assisted living out there, an increased traffic of Increase traffic and maybe even increase pedestrian traffic. Is that something we can ask the county through the chief, through public works, through the rain? Direct me and I will take care of it. Chief, please evaluate that and visit with your counterparts and see what we can do. So, great. Any other others? I'm to all adjournment. Motion to adjourn. Thank you. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye.